The wonderful thing about this film is the villain isn't Blake and it isn't Mitch, it's addiction. The highest charting album no, no. from a British female artist in the US ever. Hi, how are you? Good, hey. how are you? Fred Perry shirt Yeah, I can. <laughs> I like yeah. your shirt. Fred Perry always in. Yeah. <laughs> Look. Good choice. Well, uh, Marisa, uh, Amy Winehouse was a huge artist and one of the most important artists of all time. Her voice was a force of nature that can be so much feeling and I think she and her music resonate with millions of people around the world because uh, she was real, direct, emotional, moving and authentic. And I think you did a great job capturing the essence of Amy in your interpretation because uh, it feels true to her, her music, her art, and her soul. But I think what I like the most is that you didn't try to imitate her completely, you know? You took her essence to create your own version of Amy and even sang her songs. And it's clear that you put a lot of heart, uh, respect, and effort into all of this. But after Back to Black, what does Amy Winehouse represent for you? Do you think uh, it changed the vision you had of her? And what do you think is the greatest, I don't know, satisfaction you got from bringing her to life in this film? Um, well, firstly, thank you for saying that. I think, you know, one of the lessons I learned from her, you know, was about that authenticity that you're talking about, that like, you know, people that touched that many people around the world. I think that like, you know, you can reach a certain level of respect by by giving people what they want, but you only break through that second boundary of respect when you give them yourself completely, um, authentically. And I think, I guess that's why I knew I could never do an impersonation because it would be the opposite of being Amy to weirdly completely try and copy Amy because there has to be an element of spontaneity and um it was it, it has to just be more about a feeling than anything else and, and i think that 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 rings more true to her than than an impersonation um yeah so i guess that's what she would leave with me is um you know i think that she was an artist that strove for perfection Um, and I respect that as an artist, but you know, authenticity is 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 a rare trait to come by, and it's definitely something to to strive for. Sam, in the film, there are several scenes where we see Amy at different times in her life, uh, living with a bird that was almost always caged, and I found that part very interesting because. Even though she always had this rebellious attitude towards to the world mm -hmm. and pretty much did whatever she wanted, I think in a way she felt like that bird that was never 100% free. Mm -hmm. And I think that speaks a lot to everything that she had to deal with throughout her life. Uh, mm -hmm. We know that Amy Winehouse's life is very well uh, documented, but I think this insight you give us into her story showing both the light and the darkness that surrounded her is very valuable mm -hmm. so how does this narrative or analogy come about and what do you think was the biggest challenge in developing this film i ask because it was a detail that captivated me and that i think is very yeah. beautiful to be honest what happened was i met with amy's mom janice And she told me about her love of this bird, of this canary that she had, and this amazing kind of relationship she had with this bird that when it died, they had to do a full burial of this bird and, you know, in a proper cemetery. And, you know, it was, was so meaningful for her. And when Janice told me this story, it just felt the analogy of that bird, you know, this beautiful voice, this incredible little creature you know it just felt so strong that I kept thinking about it to the point where I said okay it has to be in the movie and it has to just be very subtly just woven through the story and um, and the bird becomes free 
you know, when, when she's, as she's falling in love, the bird comes out of the cage and it's flying around her flat. And there's a sort of freedom to that love at a certain point. And then it kind of disappears again. And then it comes back, you know, at the end. And the whole film was quite an intense emotional experience. So in terms of, you know, how, how did it feel sort of, you know, working with that intensity? It was, you know, a gift in so many ways to be able to create that narrative through her music but also through some of those stories that were less known as well, like the relationship with her grandmother. Write songs, because I've got to make something good out of something bad. Mitch Winehouse has always been a complex figure when it comes to talking about Amy. There are those who blame him partly for what happened to her, but I think beyond that, I think it is up to us to judge whether he did the right or wrong thing with his daughter because at the end of the day the love that he had was evident they had feelings for each other and sometimes it is difficult to help or try to save the people we love if they are not willing to do something about it you know it's a complicated position but yes. what is your point of view on it do you think your initial perspective on Mitch Winehouse change after playing him in the film? No, um, I don't buy into, it's my nature not to buy into binary binary narratives because as an actor, um, binary narratives means bad acting. Complexity and nuance and honesty is the way to, to create a human being on film or on stage. About a year before they, they offered me the part of Mitch Winehouse, I knew that they were thinking of me and I asked a friend of mine who worked with both Amy and Mitch and had first-hand experience of their relationship. I asked him what he thought of Mitch. Now, my friend's uh, teenage children go to school with my children, so we're both fathers. And my friend said he liked Mitch. He said Mitch was a loving father, but he was in an impossible situation. He did his best and he made mistakes. And I thought that was a very healthy perspective. Before I was sent the script, I said that if I wouldn't do the film if it sanitized him or if it demonized him, because that's not the way I work. And when I received the script, I realized that Matt had written the, a film from exactly the same perspective as me and that Sam had exactly the same vision. We was all on the same page because the wonderful thing about this film is the villain isn't Blake and it isn't Mitch, it's addiction. I think one of the reasons why people when someone like Amy dies, someone so young, so talented, someone who's touched our lives in such a profound way, in society, there's a kind of collective trauma. And the way that you deal with trauma is you try to understand it. And one of the ways of understanding it is adopting a very reassuring narrative. And the reassuring narrative in this situation is to blame someone. And it's to blame Blake or to blame Mitch. And the reason we do that is because it's reassuring. If my daughter doesn't marry someone like Blake, if I don't behave the way they say Mitch behaves, then my daughter won't die. But addiction doesn't work like that. Addiction is arbitrary, it's chaotic, it's cruel, and it kills people. And so I'm so proud of this film that the addiction is the villain and not Mitch and Blake. I don't think I was put on this earth just to sing. Me. I want to be a wife. I want to be a mom. Alison, I, I think the music was one of the things I like most about the movie because it feels like it was another character in the entire story. In addition to listening to Amy's classics, I really like that in different parts of the, the movie, there are several particular songs that give us a context about her and the great influences that she had from and I know that Nick Cave and Warren Ellis were behind the score and even composed an original song for the film. But can you tell us a little about what it was like to tell this musical narrative? Because seriously, it was one of my favorite things of, of the movie. Oh, well, that's wonderful to hear. I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously music was was not just an integral part of Amy's life, it kind of was her life, you know? So telling the story, telling Amy's story had to be uh, the music. The music was not laced onto the top, you know? It wasn't, I think with a lot of, a lot of films that have music, the music is the icing on the cake. But with Amy's, 
story the music was the cake you know that was that 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 was how it was baked and once matt had had and sam had chosen the songs that really were t- told the story of her life both her own songs and the songs that were an influence on her they didn't get moved around you know i mean as a producer i'm used to you know you get in the edit and you move things around and it's not entirely as it, as it was in the first place but nothing got moved because the songs were not songs that decorated her life they were her life so so they were just in just absolutely you know once those stakes were planted in the ground they did they didn't move and we were really concerned that those were the the, the right choices because when amy wrote a song she wrote a song because she couldn't not write a song at that point in her life it was how she had responded to the events and how she dealt emotionally with it so that's why we couldn't move them they were a part, they weren't decorating the narrative they were a part of the narrative and so we approached it that way and and i think the the songs that were an influence on her were, were, were chosen in the same way they were an influence at that particular point and they got her from one part of her life to the other Guys, I think Amy Winehouse is one of those inevitable artists, you know? At some point in life, it is inevitable not to listen to any of her songs and end up impacted by her lyrics, her voice, and by all the art that she reflected with her music. But do you remember what was the first thing you learned about her, or what do you consider to be the, the Amy song that has resonated the most with you and why? Well, for me, it's Tears dry on their own because I think that's the song that Sam sent to me as soon as we we she asked me if I was interested in doing it she said just listen to that song which obviously I knew but listening to it with a, with a movie in mind it just blew me away and this was before I'd done any research or thought about what kind of structure the 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 film would be I just it, I just felt it again. I just really got right inside my bones and I just became so excited about, you know, what we could do together with the co- collaboration with, with Alison on, on, on Amy. And as, as and Alison's right, the, the star is obviously Amy, but the other star is the music. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for your time. Congratulations for this movie. Take care. Cheers, guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah.